Hi, I'm outdoors writer David Figura, and today I'm with Dr. John Van Neel, a professor of environmental conservation at Finger Lakes Community College. John teaches courses in wildlife management and management of black bear. And in those courses, he uses trail cameras extensively. Hi, John, how are you doing there? Thanks for having me, Dave. Now, John, trail cameras are used for a variety of purposes, you know, security on homes, research, but more so for personal use. And the biggest use is by white-tailed deer hunters. Um, for someone who just is getting into trail cameras, briefly, what are the different types and how much should one be looking to spend to get one? That's probably the most common question that I get from people. And they want a nice little compact answer that they can, a bite-sized answer that they can take away with them. But it's it's hard to do. Everybody's budget is a little bit different. So let's talk about cost to start with. Okay. Like, like most things, you really get what you pay for. So there are some very inexpensive models out there that are under, let's say, $50 in the $50 to, to, to $60 range. Uh, but you're going to get images with those that are uh, not crisp and clear. Even if the lens is good, the, the, uh, the detection of the animal in front of the, the camera often uh, requires a slower trigger speed with those inexpensive cameras. So you, you end up with beginners uh, not wanting to invest a lot of money because they don't know if they're going to enjoy it or not. And then they get cameras with the, these results that are difficult to interpret. So everybody imagines those nice, crisp, clear pictures with the, uh, the deer standing right in the middle, standing perfectly still and all in focus. But the, the more inexpensive cameras are often going to produce blurrier results. And if you're able to interpret them, if you can still tell it's a gray squirrel, maybe that's enough for you. But you won't get those exciting pictures as often. And that effect is actually magnified at night, if I can just add that last little bit to it, because all of these cameras are using an artificial light source, of course, at night. So the trigger speed is going to be even slower then. And that's when a lot of the animal activity takes place in front of these cameras, as you well know, is at nighttime. Mm -hmm. So I recommend people try to uh, do some research online, get uh, look at some images, look at product reviews, and decide for themselves what their minimum budget really realistically can be. And we're at a point now where the technology is getting better and better, and you can probably invest in the $120, $140 range and have a camera that you can be really proud of. Now, how do these cameras work? Do they have motion detectors in them, or how? We've been calling them trail cameras this whole time, and that's the common name for them in the general public. When when I read research articles about these, they're called camera traps, which is kind of which is it's they're, they're synonymous, right? They mean the exact same thing, but right. that's what the that's what the professionals in the field call them. And they're literally thinking about it as the animal walks in front of the camera and you trap an image of it rather than trapping them, let's say, in a metal in a metal trap. And you do that as you as you indicated by having a sensor that detects heat in motion. John, the um, the thing, you know, one of, the, one of the things I've heard as an outdoors writer is that on occasion, I've come across people who got great trail camera photos and videos, but they put food out. Um, mm -hmm. And I know that in regards to feeding animals, there's some state laws against that. Could you address that? Yeah, that's true. You, you know, it's never legal in New York State to feed uh, deer or bear unless you were to have a research permit in order to do that. So by putting food in front of a camera and then, you know, letting nature take its course sort of thing, you, do, you don't know if you're going to ever feed a deer or a bear there. And quite frankly, um, attracting animals, especially predators to food is problematic because uh, once animals start thinking of humans as a source of food, uh, they lose some of that natural natural fear. Congregating animals at a food source is problematic for the animals because they can uh, pass disease to each other uh, more easily. So rarely do we ever put a food a bait in front of a camera. Um, sometimes we'll use a scent lure. So I teach my students that the difference between bait and scent is that a scent is not designed to be consumed. We will sometimes put scent on a rock and see an animal lick at it, um, but it, they're not getting any caloric reward for that. So hmm. uh, bait can draw an animal uh, from a long distance away and really change its behavior. Scent, and, and you apply very little of it, 
takes an animal that may have missed your camera by 10 or 15 feet or yards and draws it right right over in front of the camera. So you're, 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 you're bringing the locals right to that one spot rather than trying to draw in everybody from, from the back 40 acres to that one, one location.